Imagine a world where communication wasn't as easy as picking up a phone and dialing a number. It's a world where message delivery was slow, and the concept of instant communication was a distant dream. This was the world before the inception of telephones. However, the birth of telephones didn't immediately revolutionize communication as we know it today. The initial design of these groundbreaking devices presented a unique challenge. Each number on the telephone corresponded to a specific letter. For instance, the number 2 represented the letters A, B, and C, while the number 3 represented D, E, and F. This system, although innovative, was far from perfect. It made dialing numbers a complex task. Imagine trying to dial a number, but instead of simple digits, you had to navigate through a series of letters. It was like trying to crack a code every time you wanted to make a call. This complexity impeded the widespread use of telephones. It wasn't just a matter of inconvenience. This intricate system created a barrier to communication, making telephones less accessible to the general population. A device that was meant to connect people was ironically becoming a source of disconnect due to its complicated interface. The need for a more user-friendly system was evident. People yearned for simplicity, for a way to communicate without having to decipher a puzzle each time. The world was ready for a change, a shift from the complex to the straightforward. And so the stage was set for a new development in the world of telephones, the introduction of letters under the phone buttons. The complexity of this system needed a solution, and in came the concept of letters under the phone buttons. This innovative concept would not only simplify the process of dialing numbers, but also pave the way for a more inclusive and widespread use of telephones. As we delve deeper into this journey, let's keep in mind that every great invention is a response to a need, a solution to a problem, and in this case, the need for simplicity in communication was the driving force behind this significant change. As telephones became more commonplace in the 1960s, a new system was developed to simplify number dialing. This system brought a significant change to the way we interacted with our telephones. Instead of each number corresponding to a single letter, as was the case in the early days of telephones, the new system gave each button a trio of letters. Now, Imagine a telephone keypad in your mind. Picture the numbers 2 through 9, each assigned with a group of three letters. The number 2, for instance, represents the letters A, B, and C. This new arrangement made it much easier to find the desired letter, thereby simplifying the dialing process. It was a design decision that dramatically improved the user experience, making telephones more accessible to a wider audience. This was more than just an enhancement in convenience, it was a transformation. The introduction of letters on telephone keypads was not only about making the device more user-friendly, but also about shaping our relationship with technology. It was about making technology more intuitive, more natural, more human. This system made communication faster, more efficient, and less prone to errors. It made it possible for us to dial phone numbers without having to remember a complex series of digits. Instead, we could now dial by remembering a simple sequence of letters, like the name of a person or a place. This was a revolutionary idea. It was a shift from the mechanical, impersonal nature of numbers to the familiar, human nature of letters. It made the technology of telephones more personal, more relatable. But these letters weren't chosen at random, there was a method to the madness. The selection of letters under each number was a strategic decision, not a random one, as you might think. This decision was based on a simple yet effective principle, ease of use. The goal was to make dialing numbers as effortless as possible, and to achieve that, they needed to take into account the frequency of use of each letter in the English language. Consider the English alphabet. Some letters are used more frequently than others. For instance, the letter E is the most commonly used letter in English. So it would make sense to put it somewhere easily accessible, wouldn't it? And that's exactly what they did. Let's take the number 2 on your phone keypad. Underneath it, you will find three letters, A, B, and C. But where's E? Well, in the world of rotary dial phones, E was right there on the number 2 button. But as phone technology evolved and buttons replaced rotary dials, 
E had to find a new home. So where did E go? Here's the genius part. They placed E at the bottom of the number three button. Why? Because it is more intuitive for our fingers to move down rather than sideways. It's a small detail, but it makes a big difference in usability. And it wasn't just E. The placement of all the letters was determined by their frequency of use. The most commonly used letters like A, E, I, O, U, T, and N were all placed at the bottom of the buttons. This made it easier for people to dial numbers and reduce the chances of making a mistake. But what about the least frequently used letters? Let's delve into that. Q and Z, the least frequently used letters, had a special place on the phone buttons. But why would these letters be given such a unique position? The answer lies in their frequency of usage. Due to their relatively low occurrence in English, Q and Z were placed right at the top of the buttons. This was not a random decision, but rather one that was carefully thought out and methodically implemented. By placing these lesser used letters at the top, it required users to stretch their fingers a bit more to reach these keys. This might seem like a minor detail, but it significantly reduced errors while using these letters. The logic behind this decision is quite fascinating. The human brain is wired to make shortcuts and conserve energy wherever possible. Therefore, by placing the least used letters in a position that required a bit more effort to reach, it subtly discouraged the use of these letters unless absolutely necessary. This also helped to ensure that these less frequently used letters were not mistakenly pressed when dialing or inputting information. Furthermore, this unique placement of Q and Z also contributed to the overall user-friendly layout of the phone buttons. It helped to maintain a balance between ease of use and error reduction, a balance that was crucial in the early days of telephones when users were still getting accustomed to this new technology. Fast forward to the present day, and the use of these letters under the phone buttons has evolved. The strategic placement of Q and Z and the thought process behind it is a testament to the incredible attention to detail that went into the design of the telephone keypad. This design has stood the test of time and continues to influence the design of modern-day keypads and touchscreens. Today, most people may not even notice the letters under the phone buttons, with the majority of us having our contacts stored digitally, we tend to memorize numbers rather than rely on the letters beneath. However, there are still instances where these letters come into play. For those who prefer a more tactile approach, or perhaps for those who simply enjoy the nostalgia, the letters provide an alternative way to dial numbers. In fact, in certain countries, important dial codes such as emergency numbers are represented solely by letters. This method has proven to be quite effective, as it's often easier to recall a memorable word than a random sequence of digits. So, while the use of letters on phone buttons might seem obsolete to some, they remain a crucial aspect of our telecommunication history and continue to serve a purpose in today's digital age. And that's the story of the letters under your phone buttons. The letters under the phone buttons, a simple yet significant invention, have played an essential role in the evolution of telephony. These letters, first introduced during the 1960s, transformed the dialing experience, making it less cumbersome and more intuitive. The placement of these letters wasn't random. The most frequently used letters were positioned at the bottom, while the least used, like Q and Z, found their place at the top. This thoughtful arrangement minimized errors and enhanced the user experience, in our modern world, while most of us rely on our memory to dial numbers, the underlying letters still serve a purpose, especially in some countries where emergency numbers are represented by letters. These humble letters, hidden beneath the phone buttons, have significantly contributed to making telephones more user-friendly and widespread. The letters simplified dialing, making phones accessible to people of all ages and skill levels, and that is their legacy.